So in this segment, we're going to be discussing Rishi Sunak's massive gamble with the uh, with the Rwanda bill. Um, and, you know, despite the fact that it was struck down, the original uh, legislation was struck down by the Supreme Court, um, they are going to pass, try to pass another bill. And this is a monumental week for Rishi Sunak, not only just with the COVID inquiry, but I think this vote could be very problematic for him. You say it would be the wrong thing to do to pull the bill tomorrow. Can you rule out pulling the bill? There are no plans to pull the bill tomorrow. But that's and the that's fact very, is, that's, that the is interesting because that to we, me, we have a I'll be honest, reader. that listening to this from a journalistic perspective, to me that sounds like you're not ruling out pulling the bill. You asked me a direct question. I gave you a direct answer. It was second really, reading. No, it, it was. We have second reading of this legislation. He doesn't sound very confident, and I think chances are, Sophie, we're just quick that he doesn't sound very confident. Um, I, I don't see them pulling the bill, but I, I just don't know how much Sunak is willing to gamble on this. ...tomorrow, and what I want to see is Conservative MPs back in this bill in this second reading debate, and also I'd like to see MPs from other parties support this bill, because it's not good enough. The Labour Party's position of complaining about everything we take forward and offering no credible alternative. I mean, the Labour Party have offered some some alternatives um, regarding like, safe routes of entry and other other policy, so that that's not true, um, what he's saying there. But I think what's going to happen is if this bill fails, the Tories are going to blame Labour for it, and I don't know how that's going to play out given they have a stonking majority and you have lots of Tory MPs saying that this bill doesn't go far enough. I just can't see that attack line landing. You can see even Laura Koonsberg talking about the huge splits in the Tory party, which I think we'll speak about in a bit. But it's very clear the Tory party is incredibly divided on this bill. Uh, Tory MPs under pressure to back Sunak's plan because it looks like it's not going to go through at the moment, or at least it's going to be very close. You had Robert Jenrick resign over this bill, despite the fact that he said before, um, in days gone by really, that he thought the legislation was good enough. But... Um, he he resigned over it and i wonder you know um with kind of sweller braveman going i wonder if he knows something we don't right now uh which is very ominous considering that he tried to back sunak on this stuff and then he just kind of i, I don't know he just resigned in, in the most bizarre way you know he's saying he's not going to vote for sunak's Miranda bill because it doesn't go far enough very very odd behavior from Jenrick. You got Beth Rigby um, quoting a former minister saying the PM should stand up to the right calling for Rwanda to be an electoral hill we live or die on. It's still the economy stupid. The right know this, but they have written off electoral success or even losing well. Get this wrong and our broad church party will splinter into too light and dark blue and you know what, what the tories fail to understand is the erg and certain other groups infiltrated the tory party and took over them and pushed them far towards the right wing the ukipification of the tory party they fundamentally do not care about the tory party like um kind of the one nation tories do so they don't care if it breaks all they care is getting the things that they want passed before the next election because they know it's over so they're looking to do as much damage as possible pass as many right-wing policies as possible and this rwanda bill is one of them now the other thing they're going to vote against is the windsor framework as well you've got this from uh victoria derbyshire kind of piecing up uh, another tory mp etc etc where where they might have been at risk of torture or death rwanda has little or so this is the supreme court ruling no experience of considering asylum applications. Where Rwanda has declined asylum applications, no written reasons have been provided and there's no right of appeal. Asylum applicants in Rwanda have had no recourse to appeal. Although a right of appeal has existed since 2018, there's never been an appeal in practice. The Rwandan asylum process is marked by an absence of legal representation, etc. That's one of the reasons why the uh, Tories want to put lawyers in Rwanda, British lawyers in Rwanda to deal with asylum claims. Etc, etc, etc. Where's the evidence they've sorted all that out, apart from your 12-page bill stating that Rwanda suddenly, magically, is safe? No, Rwanda has always been a safe country. Nope, that's, that's, not, that's not true at all. Uh, Rwanda is a modern democracy. You're, you're ignoring are... all those points <laughs> no, I've just I, given I, to I'm you from the no, Supreme I, Court. I, I'm, not, I'm not ignoring it, with respect. Uh, we have dealt with that with the Where's new, the evidence? The new treaty that we signed. Uh, but this is this is inter this is how treaties are made. Uh, we have made a treat. We've ha made a treaty with Rwanda. Uh, they are a, a country that we've worked with. We've had a good relationship sure, with. We just they want are, to see the are, evidence. They are taking this. This. I too want to see the Victor the evidence, Victoria Derbyshire but we're not going to see it because there isn't any. 
Um, this from Esther McVeigh. We talk about the Minister of Common Sense. Safe routes. This is what Labour's talking about. This is what Jasmine's talking about. And that means actually more people will be coming here if you offer Hang on. up. I thought safe the government routes. was currently currently looking at the safe routes that are available. With Not increasing. Them. So we're taking down immigration because I'm interested. Uh, the thing is, if Richie said I wanted to stop the votes, then the safe routes of entry would be one of the major ways of stopping the votes. But, you know, stopping the votes. But, you know, clearly the right wingers are just completely brain dead and don't understand this because what they want to do is just bring the raw numbers down. But they don't understand people have right to claim asylum, regardless of if they end up in France or whatever. You can choose the country you claim asylum in. Um, this from Labour, pretty good. £300 million uh, pounds of British taxpayers' money to Rwanda, not a single asylum seeker sent. Um, it is attacking the Tories from the right, which is a bit concerning. Um, but given the fact that Labour have said they would scrap the Rwanda policy despite Cooper really messing up an interview, um, this is not bad, given the context. You know, you've got, you've got different political editors saying that, or different correspondents saying that, um, they think the Tories are going to kick this legislation into the long grass because it will they'll probably end up in defeat. And it looks like the Tories are very much committed to this legislation, which is nuts. And um, one of the theories that Stats for Lefties has pointed out is that Reform UK are polling around 11%. And this could be the thing that's causing the Tories so much fear because of the fact that, you know, to, to be fair though, you know, UKIP won 13% in 2015, but it's about dispersal as well. The Tories still won a majority. So I don't, I don't know if this is the only thing causing the right-wing shift, but I think Sunak, Sunak is gambling. I think that the One Nation Tories, people like Theresa May, the worst thing they will do is abstain from votes, um, which is one thing, but he knows the hard right of the party will vote against legislation. They've done it before. They've done it against Theresa May um, before, and they were one of the major thorns in her premiership. So I think he 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 knows the far right in his party are dangerous, but he also knows that if he tries to pass a kind of hard right wing bill on you know the Rwanda policy, it's going to get rejected by the Supreme Court. The problem is, I can see still see this le current legislation probably being rejected by the Supreme Court. So I, I don't know what his game is here. It's very strange. Um, the Tories are very split on this. You know, the Conservatives putting out an attack ad, kind of a bad attack tweet saying Labour, when you ask them for their uh, plans to tackle legal migration, you got Tobias Elwood saying, please delete this post. Um, but then again, he retweeted it. So it's very strange. Um, he's a very strange geezer. Um, you've got this from uh, Beth Rigby, I believe this is can support it. Um, Mark Francois, the leading voice of the uh, Brexiteer ERG group, has just come out of that chamber, that star chamber meeting where they went through the details of the bill, and he said, in summary, the bill provides a partial and incomplete solution. Uh, the leading voice of the new Conservatives, Danny Kruger, went on. He said, the bill doesn't work yet, and we're hopeful the government will come forward with improvements Improvements. And Simon Clark, another leading voice on the right of the party, a former cabinet minister. I won't say Simon Clark's a leading voice. Uh, under Liz Truss said, this is a very concerning report. That's the report they've put, put together analysing the bill. He says it sets out a number of quite clear and specific challenges to the government on whether this legislation works. He goes on... And, you know, I, I imagine they're not going to vote for it. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to pass any amendments or what, but... I genuinely think they're going to vote against it. I, I'm just not sure yet. Um, they're very hard to figure out. And this is going to be Sunak's angle, and he's going to look like an absolute moron doing it because he has lost control of his party, and that will be the narrative. The narrative will not be Labour didn't back the Rwanda policy, Labour against stopping the small boats. I think the media narrative will be you've lost control of your party because you have a stonking majority. Um, Prime Minister, you've made clear that stopping the boats is one of your biggest promises to voters, and you're also telling us this legislation is the way to do it. So can I ask you, will next week's vote be treated as a vote of confidence in your government, and will you throw Conservative MPs out of the party if they defy you? You don't know, but what this vote is about is about confidence in Parliament to demonstrate that it gets the British people's frustration. The, the thing is, the Rwanda policy doesn't even poll well, even amongst Conservatives. I don't think it does that well, because people know the, the policy is not going to work. When you look at the raw numbers, when you look at all of it, we are paying ridiculous amounts of money to send maybe 100 asylum seekers over to Rwanda, where they can just, I think they can just leave anyways and try and get back to the UK to seek asylum again. It makes zero sense, this policy. I get it. 
I'm acting on it. So actually the real question- Bro, there's a cost of living crisis. That's what the British people care about. Not, not whatever you're talking about right now. When it comes to all these votes is for the Labour Party. Because I- There is. I want to get this legislation on the statute books as quickly as possible. That's what we're all about. We've moved at record pace since the judgment to get the treaty, to get the bill introduced. So the question now is the Labour Party. Because we've got, no, no, but we've got a plan, right? We've got a plan to- your, your own MPs don't believe in your plan. The hard right of your party don't believe in your plan. So to come out and try and spin this on the Labour Party makes no sense. Pass this legislation and I want to pass it quickly, right? But I'm not hearing from anyone else that they've got a plan, right? And you know, this is where, you know, Labour do need to be a lot more vocal about their plan. This is where when you've got your own plan, you can really hammer the government and Labour have mentioned some policies on this, but they need to be a lot more vocal. But their big fear, I think, is to be called up on their plan, um, you know, exact numbers, funding, all that kind of stuff, which they they are running absolutely scared of. So this this is this could be an easy win for Labour, I think, if they go that route. But, you know, this is a loss. It's a lose lose situation for Sunak, I think. Um, you know, like if, if he wins, if he passes legislation by slim majority, um, I, I think his leadership's going to look knackered, honestly, unless the hard right back it and it passes with decent numbers. I, but I can't see that happening. So the real question when it comes to Parliament, question for all of you to ask is what are the Labour... This is a, an MP telling the media what to ask, which is always a bit dodgy. What are you going to do about this vote? What are they gonna do about this legislation? Because we've got a clear plan to stop the boats. Deterrence is- It's not gonna stop the boats though. It's not a deterrent. Like you've been talking about passing this legislation for ages now. It's not deterred anyone. It's a critical part of it. There is no way to stop people coming here unless you have a deterrent that means they will be sent somewhere else. It's as simple as that. You don't have the numbers. Rwanda don't have the facilities for it. This is our deterrent and we are doing everything we can to get it on the statute books and get it up and running. So the question for votes in Parliament is what is the Labour Party's plan and are they going to back this legislation? I mean, the answer is no. I mean, I would like to see a coherent Labour plan where it's kind of all put into one place. Um, you know, Labour kind of scatter their plans like it's the bloody Infinity Stones. Um, but but I don't think this will go the way Sunak thinks it's going to go. Um, this from uh, Chakravarti saying failed asylum seekers will come back to the UK from Rwanda, but genuine asylum seekers will stay in Rwanda. What kind of incentive is that which is true? Um, you've got this from Nick Ferrari. Mr Heaton Harris, my listeners are frustrated that on a Tuesday the government puts out a minister talking up a great policy. Jenrick, he's talking about Robert Jenrick. That 24 hours later he decides to quit over. Some of you would appear so you can't even lie straight in bed when it comes to the truth. Well, forgive me for rather disagreeing with you entirely on, on, on that. And uh, I, I don't see how you can... I mean, the framing's a bit weird, but I can't see how you disagree on that when you had a minister saying this legislation's good and then he just resigns the next day over it. I just can't see how you could argue with it. And your characterisation of both Robert but we never in that know particular what to case. Take. On a Tuesday, he loves the policy. He's selling it to the nation. On a Wednesday, he's decided he quits. Uh, but that, I mean, I'm afraid, you know, I think that's an unfair characterization of Robert. It's literally what happened. Forget the bent bit, it's literally what happened. He said, this legislation is great. Next day, he's like, psych, I'm out. And actually, you'll have to ask him questions uh, uh, about that process. I mean, I mean, he was asked questions and they, he says he doesn't believe in the bill. Suddenly, he doesn't believe in it. In the Prime Minister's letter to, to Robert, the Prime Minister... Uh, was obviously a bit surprised uh, that Robert took this course of action because we believe... But I thought the legislation was great. Why would Robert do this? Believe, and it, it, I, I truly believe this is the strong. It is the strongest me bunch of measures we've ever That's taken. That's actually what we're debating. Do you I mean, it just he just looks absolutely just pathetic. Um, I think this is uh, Chris Heaton Harris. He looks so pathetic in this interview. Um, there's more. I have to say, it felt to me reasons this morning that this was going to be one of those significant days for Rishi Sunak's uh, premiership. Not only that, but on the date of the next election. Uh, forget the idea of letters of no confidence going in. The, the big problem is whether or not Rishi Sunak has a party that he cannot govern, that he cannot get legislation through. Already this week, two big rebellions on completely disparate issues, on vehicle uh, emissions for example and on the contaminated blood bill and now he lost he lost that vote on the contaminated blood bill as well a bill that the very own minister can't get through uh, the house of Co decided that he can't get through the house of commons that he is resigning over it, it feels to me as if the odds uh, on a spring election have rocketed up uh, this evening which is very interesting that she's saying that because there's sam coates has been saying he's also of sky news saying that the election's probably going to be in 25 
um it's very possible that tories go you know to the country with a mandate saying like the rwanda policy you know the, the hard right rwanda policy um can go through but the problem is the courts can still block it um so it's just i, I can't see that working either it doesn't make any sense the Rwanda signing of that treaty that will be the moment in all of this. It's, it's what's going to happen with the domestic legislation. If you think of what the government are doing this week, immigration plan in three parts. Day one, on Monday, you got the trying to bring down net migration by legal routes. Uh, then the Home Secretary flies to Kigali to sign the treaty to try and answer some of the Supreme uh, Court's concerns. Whether it will is a moot point, but that's the aim. But it's the legislation, Sophie. And, and what's unclear tonight is what will be in it. As I understand it, the substance still being decided. But what is clear is whatever is in it is going to be controversial. And this is a Prime Minister that made a pledge in January to stop the small boats. He promised when the Supreme Court... You know, we're at the end of the year. He hasn't managed to do it. The, the party is so split on this. It doesn't It doesn't make sense. And, you know, the Supreme Court's blocked it. I can't see where they go from here. Um, this from Stephen Flynn uh, is pretty good. What do you make of this scheme? I just... I despair, uh, if I'm honest. You know, the government's spoken about Rwanda now for, what, 18 months or so. It's not yielded any tangible benefits for anyone. They've spent the best part of, what, £140 million. Pounds. We don't know how much more they're going to spend on this. You know, there's an easy solution. You create safe and legal routes and you invest in more staff to clear the backlog. The reason they don't want to do that is they want to create a culture war over some of the most marginalised and vulnerable people, not just in the UK, but on the planet. It's all just a bit despicable, and I'm frankly fed up of it, and I think... Straight facts. You know, the Tories do create these culture wars in order to distract you from the failing economy, the fact that wages have been stagnant, social services are completely decimated. And so what they do is they create monsters like this. You know, they create the immigration backlog at the end of the day, the asylum, sorry, the asylum backlog at the end of the day. They created this whole mess, and now they're telling you they're the ones that can save you from it. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And so, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of the points Stephen Flynn made there. Um, you've got this from Sam Coates saying, I think the chances of a January election 2025 is slowly rising, um, which is very strange given that it looked like Sophia Ridge was saying a spring election kind of hinting at a, a 2024 election. So um, that'd be quite fun. Uh, if they had a bet on that, that'd be quite fun. Um, you got Tory MP Sir Charles Walker saying the Tories don't deserve Rishi Sunak and are so lucky to have him as leader. He had Sunak should call an immediate general election if there is a vote of confidence in him. And this is the big threat. This is the big threat that if the Tories say um, we're going to go to the uh, we we've had enough, um, you know, um, we want you to go, then he can trigger a general election. He he's well within his rights, I think, to call a general election, and that will happen over six weeks. But that will take us just into the new year, which they're, they're going to lose. They're going to get absolutely torched. Um, so, you know, essentially this is Sunak's nuclear option. It was very surprising Boris Johnson didn't take that option or Liz Truss. So I don't know if Rishi Sunak will take it because I don't think he sees himself as prime minister um, for that long. I, I can just see him going to California, to be honest. Um, this from Mark Francois saying the government will be best advised to pull the bill. So it's very clear that the ERG lot and other groups will not uh, vote for this bill. And I think they'll vote against it. And that's massively damaging for the government. And abstention is one thing, but a vote against it is very different. Now, what's going on now in Westminster is a bit like a giant game of chicken. On one side is Rishi Sunak. On the other side, rebellious Conservative MPs. And for the Prime Minister, winning would mean getting his Rwanda bill through Parliament, through the House of Commons tomorrow. For rebellion... He's still got a third reading to go through as well, which could be problematic, because that's where all the amendments would be added. And, you know, very, you know, some of the people who might be a bit more on the fence about it will have to decide at the third reading. As Conservatives, winning means forcing the government to change the Rwanda bill to something they are happier with. Nobody wants to back down. Nobody wants to let the other side win. But refusing to back down for both sides is actually very, very dangerous because if the Prime Minister puts the bill to Parliament tomorrow and loses, well, that means he's lost control. He can't put legislation through. And frankly, that looks like endgame territory, general election territory. Now, Rishi Sunak could back down by pulling the bill tomorrow and rebellious Conservatives could back down by holding their noses and voting for the bill at second reading. Who will blink first? And look, I'll hold my hands up. On Thursday last week, when I sat in this chair, my gut, after talking to Conservative MPs, was that this bill 
would go through. I'd still probably say the same thing, but things do feel a lot less clear. And it's because of that game of chicken. MPs are egging each other on, working out how far they can push it. And then, of course, something else comes into it too, that very human emotion, pride. Who's going to back down? Or is no-one going to back down? And if no-one does, well, then goodness knows where that leaves us. And that's where it, gets, it does get quite interesting. I think her analysis is really good um, because we don't know um, what the numbers are, really. The only Even the whips are going to be unsure of what the numbers are like. Um, and it might be the case that we might see abstentions tomorrow um, during the vote. And then, you know, during the third reading, that's where it'll really get interesting. And that will be early next year, I think. And so that's where, you know, we might fall into uh, more votes of no confidence. Um, but also Sunak saying, all right, then let's let's do this. Let's go to an election um, because, you know, I need to get a fresh mandate um, and MPs have to sign up to it. I don't know. But um, we have seen before just, you know, they changed to Liz Truss um, from Boris Johnson. There was no fresh mandate. There was no fresh mandate when they got Sunak. Um, and it, it just depends on, I think, if this ERG lot are smart. Because if they want to cling on to power, their best bet is just letting this thing run a bit longer and just delaying uh, just delaying the bill. Because at the end of the day, if if they want to cling on to power and get other stuff through, then they're in the best place to do it. But if they're willing to sink the government over this kind of bill, um, then they're quite stupid because all it will mean is Labour will come in and they will guaranteed not get a Rwanda plan in. So uh, th th I think the strength, the biggest strength this lot have, the hard right of the Tory party, is they don't compromise. They don't, they don't believe in compromise. They'll vote against bills. They don't care. They don't follow the whip. And that's what I think has really bullied Tory leaders, especially uh, Theresa May, who had no majority. They were a massive problem for her. But under Rishi Sunak, uh, when you have a party so split, um, it's going to be very difficult, I think, to, for him to get this legislation through because I can't see any other parties backing it except maybe the DUP, because the DUP are a bunch of wild cards. Um, but aside from them, and there's only like 12 of them, I think, I, I can't see any of the other parties backing this uh, bill. So I, I, I genuinely don't know how tomorrow is going to play out. I will try and do some midweek recording so we can kind of catch up and see what's happened. Um, but, you know, this is a massive, massive gamble for Rishi Sunak. And um, in the words of uh, one of my favorite characters, that's a bold strategy card. And let's see how that plays off for him. So remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And let's see how this bold strategy plays out.